tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi there. Arnold is currently rendering with a GPU, by the way, a scene which I'll show you at the end of this tutorial. It's about 3D imaging and it's not about 3D cameras. Here we see two spheres, the Earth on the left and something else like a room on the right. There's something strange going on on the right hand side. The left hand side, the Earth is what we're used to. It's a spherical mapping on a sphere in Maya. And this is a spherical mapping too on a sphere in Maya. What is so strange about this view here? Are we inside or are we outside? It's about the same image as this one. And now we're inside of that sphere. And we can navigate all around that place. It's a dentist studio. And now I change the focus of the camera. Which camera, you might ask? It is the Arnold camera, which sits in the scene. Now let's have a look at the scene in Maya. We create two spheres. So we need two shaders, obviously. So the left one is going to be the Earth, new material, and I use a Maya a Lambert shader because I don't need any reflectiveness or anything like that. I could have used the default grey Lambert shader as well, but this would then later apply to all other new objects. They would have the same Earth mapping, which I don't want, so I have a Lambert 2 here in the scene now. I click on color on this checkboard icon here and I want to map the color with an image up here it's the image name and then I pick the image and uh, I show you the image before I actually load it into Maya it's this one it is from wiki Commons, so it's in the public domain you can use it anywhere in any kind of contexts you like here the whole world land and oceans and you can get it in high resolutions, like 8,000 by 4,000 pixels. Now, when you look at this image closely, you see that there's uh, there, there are problems. All the objects in the center of the scene, like here and close to the, uh, to the equator, are depicted smaller than the ones up there. So the further away from the equator we get, for example, to England here, England looks... Uh, as big as Madagascar, although it's only half size of Madagascar. The South Pole is really massive here. It's uh, as big as, well, all continents together, the North Northern Hemisphere maybe. Uh, but of course, the South Pole is quite small, actually. It's a continent, obviously. So this is the image I'm going to use here. In order to see it properly, I need to click here. And now you see that it's totally intact, it's okay. And England looks tiny and Madagascar looks bigger. So everything is fine here, all the geometry is good. The South Pole is the South Pole. Well, it's a continent, it's uh, bigger than uh, Australia, I guess. But, uh, well, you can see the Earth depicted very nicely on a sphere. The problem here is to map this wonderful sphere image on into a two-dimensional space. This just doesn't work without warping, as we've just seen. Uh, so it's always a projection, and here it works perfectly. So this is, well, just a one-stop solution. Second one, right mouse click, assign a new material, Maya Lambert, and we map this again with the file. And here we'll have to choose the file, and I'll show you the file. This is the image. I took it in a dental practice and here you see the same problem. The chair where the patient sits and where I just sat before I took this picture here uh, is 
It's getting so wide here close to the south part of that image because it's a 360 degree mapping. It's not meant to be flattened on a screen or printed out or whatever. So everything is distorted here because the window here, for example, continues into this window here on this side. So uh, we stitch both sides together now in our sphere. Let's choose the dental practice here. And now you see that irritating effect. When I uh, select the object, the sphere, and press F, I rotate around that sphere. It doesn't work, right? But now you see, for example, the air conditioning at the ceiling is quite small, whereas here it's really huge, it's really big. So, projection problem. What about going into that sphere. Well, it's black, so let's select the sphere and go to the modeling menu set here and mesh display because it's a display function here and we reverse the whole scene. Now we're inside. And this is the grid here, which we don't need to see here. And this is basically all I wanted to show you. So here we can navigate in that space, which I took with a 300 euro camera 5000 pixels wide it has a lot of a chromatic aberration here at the windows but basically it's um, it's a good scene and you also find it in wikipedia <laughs> So you're basically in the driver's seat here. You can take a seat here and uh, look around. And we're in Maya, so we can use a new camera, view, create a camera from that view. It's called Perspective 1 in this case. Perspective 1, when we click on it and the Attribute Editor opens, if it doesn't open, use Control a for the Attribute Editor. And here you can change the focal length, for example, maybe in, into a wide angle 15. If we want to render this with Arnold, we need a light in the scene. And for that purpose, I used in my animation a mesh light. Scale it down. Now let's get back inside. And now I convert this geometry into a mesh light. So it gets transparent and it sends out volumetric lighting information into that the inner of that sphere. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that the inside of this mesh light is not illuminated. So if you want to place objects later in into this area, just you have to move the, the light somewhere else. You can render this. You see it's a little bit dim. Arnold is rendering the perspective shape. It's using the CPU currently. Intensity 4 and you get a very bright view of that room here. Once you're inside, you can do many things, like you can place something inside here. And with this, I leave you for now, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.